to uh, demonstrate um, something called the perspective effect in uh, Inkscape. I'm not sure exactly which versions uh, have the effect. I know the latest ones do. I'm not sure when it was introduced, but um, I also know there are some people who have problems using it, can't get it to work properly, mostly uh, I think on Linux uh, uh, machines, but uh, I'm running a Linux machine. I, I've been able to get it to work, so hopefully uh, if you do have it working, you can have some fun with it. Um, if you don't have it working, hopefully uh, this will encourage you to to uh, maybe get on the mailing list and try and get the problems fixed or solved. So here we'll just demonstrate quickly um, a couple examples. First we'll do is a, a quick rectangle, say a rounded rectangle. And what we have to do is define two shapes. One is obviously the one we want to transform. And then the second shape is um, the perspective shape. And the perspective shape, I usually use the Bezier tool. You have to define four segments a rectangle kind of. Um, and generally it's the best idea to start at the bottom left. Uh, if you change the order that you create these four segments in, it tends to rotate uh, the object when you do the transformation. So uh, that'll be demonstrated uh, probably in a second. But uh, we'll start at the bottom left and we'll say define some kind of uh, perspective shape. The other thing you have to um, make sure you do is that the path you the object you're going to transform has to be a path. It can't be a rectangle, a text object, or anything else. It has to be a path. So, uh, what you have to do is prepare the object, select it, and convert it into a path. So we'll do path object to path. And by looking at the bottom uh, here, this bar, when you select the object, you can double check that it is a path. It'll say path and the number of nodes. So what we do is uh, first of all, and this is important, select the perspective shape first, hold shift, and then select secondly the, um, the shape you want to transform, and then simply choose effects, modify path, perspective, and it will be transformed into a perspective shape. Keep in mind you lose the original object, so if you want to modify that original object, make sure you duplicate it before you do the transformation. So there we have a simple perspective effect. Um, try something a little bit different here. If uh, it doesn't have to be a simple rectangle, you can, you know, as you saw from the intro, uh, can be any shape. So if we wanted to define, say, you know, a simple arrow shape like this, maybe even another one uh, or a circle here. Sorry, not a s circle here, um, like that. We could transform both of these shapes. Uh, in a transform, you know, in a perspective transformation. But remember, these have to be a single path. So what you can do is make sure this one right now is an ellipse. We'll choose path, object to path. This one's already a path because I created it with the Bezier tool. And now we'll define our perspective shape. Say kind of an upwards perspective. Again, starting at bottom left. Actually, I'll demonstrate now. Uh, if we started somewhere else, first of all. I started at the top left. I think I put a curve in there. Hang on. If we start at the top left instead of the bottom left, it will not do the transformation correctly. The other thing uh, we have to do is make sure this is a single path. So what we can do is select the first path, select the second path by holding shift, um, and then choose path combine. Now we've made them one path. Note we lose the, the fill in one of the objects. Generally, once you do the transformation, you have to go back and, and correct all the colors and split the objects back into separate paths if you want to modify them. But anyways, now we have two path objects. Again, select the perspective shape first, then the one we want to transform, and then do path, or sorry, effects, modify path, perspective, and you can see that's not what we wanted. Right, because we defined those nodes in the wrong order. So if we hit Control Z, get rid of that rectangle or that perspective shape, and now we'll start from the bottom left. Here, didn't quite close that properly. There, select that one, select the second one, effects, modify path, and perspective, and now we get that shape in a perspective. Okay. One other example is text, which is always uh, fun to do in perspective. So, 
quickly do that here. And again, we can define the shape that we want with four nodes. Ah, see? Just defined it in the wrong order. Bottom left, and then clockwise. And again, both have to be paths. Right now, if we click on this, it's a text object, so again, convert it to a path first. So now we select it, and it is a path. Select the shape first, then the object effects, modify path, perspective. Okay, so now we get, you know, kind of a dynamic effect that could be quite useful. Um, that's it. Uh, ate up about a minute and a half of intro with this one. Had a little bit of fun doing that. Luckily, it only took uh, a couple of takes. Thank God for my uh, Wacom tablet. It was not done with the mouse. Um, hopefully, uh, you enjoyed it and got some use out of it.